I've lost more in the last couple months than I have in the four years I've been in the hobby. Here's the good news. My Zoas are looking better than ever. A lot of the LPS are not only looking better than ever, but the ACANs have grown a lot of heads. Hello my friends, welcome to the September 2021 update of the 140 gallon Aquapara Dominant Reef Tank. If you've been enjoying the content so far, please consider hitting that subscribe button as it really helps out the channel. And don't forget to hit that thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. If you saw my last update on this tank, you'll know that this tank was actually going downhill really fast. And I, I was concerned about a multitude of issues. I wasn't quite sure what exactly was the problem. So I've kind of got my hypothesis now and I will talk about that uh, a little bit later. But the tank was really going downhill and I would say right now, I believe we're kind of over the, the hump and it's made a 180 degree turnaround. There were times over the last couple months where I really thought there was a good chance I could lose all my SPS. Um, I've lost more in the last couple months than I have in the four years I've been in the hobby. So it was really scary. But thankfully, um, after I received the ICP tests, I, I started doing the water changes and we're turning things around. After the last video, things were going downhill. Um, I was dosing phosphates to at least get a phosphate reading. And then I finally got my ICP test results. And the test results were really interesting. I was the tank was actually deficient in a lot of um, elements, including iodine, because I stopped dosing iodine because someone had mentioned that maybe I was overdosing iodine, but my iodine levels were actually half of where they needed to be. Um, so in addition to having a lot of essential elements being lower than where they needed to be at, I had elevated tin. So my tin came back at 11, I think 11 ppm. I think it's ppm. And the range I was given was the max you want is 10. I did more reading and it turns out a source of tin is actually new aquarium glass, which coincidentally I have, I added the frag tank back at the end of March. And because of everything that's happened in life, I haven't been doing a lot of water changes. Another source of tin, is PVC or a potential source. I don't know if it's all PVC. And coincidentally, of course, when I added the frag tank, I added a ton of PVC piping to connect everything together. If your tin is too high, so I think if it's above 10, what you start to see is um, corals will lose their tissue, which is what I was seeing. So at the end of the day, I believe my phosphates have bottomed out and I believe that um, the water parameters were just not good. So it wasn't just one thing, but it was a multitude of things. And that kind of makes sense because uh, the Acroporas that I did lose, I lost them relatively quickly. Um, the RTN came fast and it came hard. After I received the ICP test, I would say right now I've done probably close to 100% water change in small parts. So I've been doing about 15 to 20 gallon water changes. And I've, at this point, I think I've done like eight of them or maybe nine of them. So it, it's close to the water volume of the entire reef system. So there's always good news and bad news to these things. The bad news is I lost a lot of coral. Thankfully, um, I haven't lost any LPS or Zoas. In fact, um, here's the good news. My Zoas are looking better than ever. A lot of the LPS are not only looking better than ever, but the ACANs have grown a lot of heads. And not all the Acropora were affected by this. So although I lost a lot of Acros, there have been some that haven't stopped growing or have actually grown faster in this period. But all that being said, the good news is now things have turned around. I'll be providing you an update on the 100 gallon frag tank next week. And we can take a look at the LPS and the Zoas.
Some of the acros that have done exceptionally well in this period where most of them have not are uh, the Fruit Splash. So it's finally come around and it's finally um, reaching its potential that I knew it always had. The Godzilla. So the funny thing with the Godzilla is at least one of the tips actually lost some flesh. And I thought, oh man, this is it. It's, it's starting now with one of my favorite pieces. And that was it. It didn't lose anything else. Um, it may not have grown after losing that little bit. But ever since the water changes, that tip is looking fine now. And I, I believe it's actually growing quite a bit. The orange sherbet is one of the pieces that really surprised me. Um, in my mind, I haven't had it for a long time. I figured it was probably a more sensitive piece. And it turns out that um, whatever was happening, it was fine with. So it doesn't look like it's missed a step at all and it's actually growing really well. Last thing before we get to the top down view of the tank, like I said, there's always pros and cons to any of this. Yes, this was a terrible event. Yes, I did lose more than I've ever lost. But I believe this was essential in my understanding of um, the whole ecosystem and how nutrients play a role with our coral. Not just with the SPS, but with the LPS. And hopefully this will make me a better reefer in the long run. Uh, 2021 has not been an easy year. When you add COVID to a lot of personal things that have happened over the last like nine months, um, this has been a really rough year. And I'm sharing this with you because I would say my mood has been lower and losing that many coral, it almost made me, I did, toy with the idea of actually leaving the hobby. Um, just cause, yeah, it's not fun. It's not fun to lose things, right? However, uh, now that things have turned back around, I'm not feeling as bad. So yes, the tank is a bit more empty, but surprisingly, when I look at it, it still looks pretty full. So where do we go from here? Well, at first I was toying with the idea of actually buying more Acros. However, taking a look at the tank now, I think I may actually, there may be enough acros in there to just leave in there and let them do their thing. So the pink Cadillac is another acro that doesn't look like it miss a beat, even with whatever issues was plaguing the tank. Um, here is the GF Jolt. I still have it, thankfully. I just lost this guy. This is, uh, Mystique. So I gotta remove that skeleton. I still have Pearlberry. Even though this was, Pearlberry is one of the first ones that really showed, um, a stress response. And you'll see on the tips, it's algae. And I was so glad to be seeing algae. Um, just because if I'm seeing algae, then that probably means there's no dinos. So I, I used to have the Hawkins right here. It's gone. Oh, here's another interesting thing. So my orange passion tenuous, it RTN'd a while back and I managed to save a couple really tiny pieces. And these tiny pieces have been doing great. They've, they've actually been doing really good in the last couple months, even though when things were, a lot of other pieces were doing bad. Here's a denim on denim. I don't know if it's gonna recover, but you can see there's quite a bit of algae on it. It was experiencing like a weird RTN, or well, it's probably STN, like slowly losing flesh. This guy, he doesn't seem to have been affected. This is my Sunset Millie. 
again, its tips were getting affected and then I think I received the ICP results. So the STNing from the tips have, has stopped and I believe it's recovering. Yeah, one of the things that has really made me really happy is that a lot of pieces that where their tips were damaged with STN or peeling, their, their tips are recovering. So this guy, his base was receding a bit, but so far, yeah, I still have him. And he seems to be growing. Here's a shocker, blue tip Turakai. It was losing flesh like crazy. So that's all algae you see now, but it stopped. So I think there's a chance it could heal. Uh, this pumpkin millie. And then in the middle there, um, mind bender, I don't know. I think it could be a cherry blossom. Here's a red Diablo. I think the coloration is kind of coming back. So excited about that. Um, the Bali Green Slimer is also doing okay. Not just doing okay, it's growing. Here's a piece, Green Dragon. So Green Dragon, um, the tips were kind of RTNing or STNing. And on top of that, the coloration was fading. So it was losing color fast. And I was so certain this was gonna be the next piece I was gonna lose. And look at, it's still not as green as when the tank was doing really well, but the coloration is coming back. I can tell for, for sure. This is purple indica. So better polyp extension than ever. Some of the tips, I think you can see a bit of algae, but um, on most of the tips, it's recovered. This is purple unicorn. So this guy got hit the hardest, although I didn't lose him. I did cut off a lot of the tips and you can see same thing, right? Just algae grown on the, on the tips that had STN, which is not bad. Um, I have a lot of hope that this guy's gonna be turning around and coming back. Down there's Jimmy Bean. It just lost his coloration, but um, no RTN as far as I can tell. Here is Godzilla. Look at him. So no STNing. Um, the coloration has become stronger and I believe that's due to having nitrates in the tank, in the system. So I don't, I, I hope it's gonna, I hope the coloration is gonna come through this time in this video. DV Ember Eyes right beside him. Yeah, this guy hasn't skipped a beat. He's growing really fast now. This is the wild, um, probably Muriculture piece that I got like over a year ago now. Um, so this guy started uh, having some STN on his tips. And if you look at it now, I was looking at it today and I realized that I believe its tips have healed. So all, all this is an indication to me that whatever was going on, whether it was the elevated tin, um, it's, it's being fixed. Um, the water changes are helping. Over here, so top right, we have the orange sherbet, which I said hasn't missed a beat. It's just growing really well. Bottom left is a fruit splash. And you can see great polyp extension. I'm seeing a lot of coloration as well, coming back to the flesh. Here's CM Pacific Chaos, and to the left is my other pearlberry. Yeah, so with this Pacific Chaos, its branches started to STN. I cut them off, and based on what I can see here, it's recovering. So recovering is good, everything. Here is um, my blue spruce. It's not really blue, eh? I mean, the coloration has gone much deeper with the nitrates, I believe. 
and you can see as well, this guy was affected, but now it's algae on the tips and I'm really happy to see that. Here is the strawberry shortcake. Um, it's still showing signs of stress. I believe it's gonna have some STN on some of the tips, but overall, I am hopeful that this guy will stay, stick around. Here's the teal dragon. So I lost a lot of, like the blue tip turakai was looking so bad. I lost the Hawkins Echinata. I thought I was gonna lose this guy for sure, but he's fine. He looks fine. No changes except for colorations coming back and being stronger. The rainbow loom. So Rainbow Loom was badly affected. I had to cut off so many tips. And one of the things I forgot to mention is that the issue must have been around for a while because yes, Acropora tips can be quite fragile, but I was cutting some things that were at least an inch below the tip and it was really brittle. So the skeleton was really brittle. I don't know, it just makes me think that I wonder if it's due to the nitrate deficiency or if um, something else caused the brittle skeletons. And that was on a lot of these coral. But, but if you look closely, new tips are growing. So that's a great sign. I'm not gonna lose this piece. So thankful. <laughs> uh, this is, I, I believe a bonsai. And the organ tort, there's a bit of STN at the base, you can see there where it's green. But he looks like he's gonna pull through. CC Blaze of Glory, it's, it's paled out. But hopefully, um, I haven't really noticed any STN or RTN. That's the WWC yellow tips. Then down there we have to the right, Force Fire Digi, which is doing fine now. The Montes were really unhappy when I was dosing the phosphates, maybe overdosing. Um, in the middle there is the Cali Tor. So you can see from tips, uh, yeah, the Cali Tor is one of those pieces that it doesn't seem to have recovered as quickly as some of the others. And then we got the yellow, Caroliana. There's a bit of STN at the bottom tips, but this guy's grown a lot in the last couple months. And if you look at the top there, there's that little, that other little bit of um, orange passion. So they're both doing really well. Good polyp extension. And then on this rack, just have like a tenuous, there's CB Maleficent. And here's my Pac-Man or Needle and Haysack. I, th I think there may be one or two other names for this guy. I was so sure I was gonna lose him, but based on what I can see, um, he looks like he's coming back and coming back um, strong. So there's some algae on the tips, but you know, these acros can deal with algae. I, I believe dinos are a different story. And there's my tool tool. So that's it. Like the only other thing I have here is I have this huge mound of um, Zoas, Pineapple Express, sitting on the floor and all this detritus. You can see all the fallout from, I had to trim so many tips. That's only a portion of it. Cause I've vacuumed out a bunch and that's it. As always, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please be sure to hit that subscribe button and the thumbs up button for the YouTube algorithm. Other than that, things are looking up. I hope your tanks are doing well. And as always in this time, please take care and stay safe and we'll see you next time.